my name is Marion. I'm from the blog Miss Mustard Seed, and I recently did a gallery wall in my home of family photos and old frames that I found at antique stores and thrift stores. I've sort of been collecting them over the years, and I finally decided to put everything together and make the gallery wall. Now, in order to do that, I had to cut some custom mats, and if you've ever paid to have custom mats cut, you know it's really expensive. So I decided a few years ago to invest in a mat cutter so I could do it all myself, and it has saved a ton of money. So a lot of people have asked me how to do that, and I'm gonna show you that today. So what you'll need is, first of all, of course, you need a picture that you want to frame. This is of my great-grandmother. And a, a frame, this is an old one I got at an antique store, it has some broken glass, kind of an old print in it, um, but I really loved the wood. I thought it was really pretty, and it goes well with this picture. You need mat board, and mat board comes in large sheets. You can buy these at craft stores, anywhere where framing is done generally. And they're usually about $5.99 a piece, maybe up to about $8 or $10 a piece. And I look for when they have their 50% off sales and then I load up on a bunch of matte colors that I like. And then you need a matte cutter. And I wish I could say that you could just do this with like scissors or a scrapbooking cutter, but you can't. You need a matte cutter, first of all, to get straight edges and second of all, to cut the beveled edges. So you do need it. Mine is a Logan mat cutter. It's an intermediate plus. The model number is 450. And I think I paid about $150 for this uh, a few years ago. But as I said, it's paid for itself over and over again. So that's what you need to get started. You also need actually one more thing. You wanna have a ruler and you can use just a yardstick. I like using a quilting ruler that's clear because I know that I'm getting 90 degree corners. If you're just using an inch wide yardstick, you might end up with some slightly wonky lines and it is important to get those lines straight so that the window is straight and also the edges that fit into the frame are straight uh, and you need a pencil. One more tool that I use, and you don't have to have this, but it's nice if you're a little bit mathematically challenged and that is a matte calculator. This is an app that I have for my phone and I calculate the matte borders by just entering in what the dimensions of the frame and the picture are, and then it tells me exactly where I wanna make all of my cuts. So it's a handy tool and I do use it often. Sometimes I do it in my head, but it's nice to use. It's like a couple dollars, I think. So I decided to go ahead and get it. So that's all you need to get started, and um, I'm gonna remove the mat cutter so we can get to cutting the mat. So the first thing that we need to do is get the mat board cut to size so it fits in the frame, because obviously it's too big, it's the wrong size. So I'm gonna turn it over so that the back side is up. And the reason why I'm doing that is any marks, pencil marks, anything like that that happens to the mat, I want it to happen on the back side so the front side stays nice and clean. It's also a good idea to put down some clean craft paper or just make sure your surface is nice and clean so you don't cut your mat and then turn it over and find out there's like, you know, spaghetti sauce on one side of it. Um, one thing that you can do, this um, picture already had a print in it, so you can use this to get the exact size or you can measure the frame and how you would do that is measure from the inside edges. Whoops, I have the wrong side there. So I would measure this and it's 14, that's from inside edge to inside edge by 10 and a half. So that's what you would want to, obviously I need to get a new piece of glass cut, so I'm gonna let them know that that's the measurement I need, 14 by 10 and a half, and that's the size that we want to cut the mat. But since I already have something that filled the frame, I'm just gonna go ahead and trace it, because that makes life just a little bit easier. I wanna make sure the edges and the corners are nice and lined up, and then I'm gonna trace it with a pencil.
and I'm going to keep this as well to use as backing once I get the new picture in there. So I'm going to keep that. I'm going to throw this away. And now I need to get the mat cutter back out, set this stuff aside so I can cut this down to size. Now these Logan mat cutters do come with two different cutters. The first one, which I'm going to use to cut this to size, is a straight cutter. And this is used when you're just cutting mat board down to size, maybe cutting it in half if you're working on a lot of small pictures, so it's easier to work with. And this has a big handle, so it's easy to sort of dig into the mat board and drag it across, and you get a nice straight cut. The other cutter is a bevel cutter, and this is so you can cut the inside of the mat board so it bevels towards the picture. And I'll show you how to use that once we cut out the window. I'm setting that aside for right now, and I'm going to use the straight cutter. And there's a, a rail that it rides along. I've lined up my mat in the cutter, um, so there's a straight edge to ride along, and there's also a straight edge to rest the rest of the mat on, so I know I'm getting a nice 90 degree cut. And I'm just gonna drag it along. Cut it that way. Okay. Lined up the second side. Sent something flying over that way. Okay, so I've got this cut to size. So now I need to figure out the dimensions of the picture. And of course I can just use a ruler for that. And I'm measuring the full width of the picture so and I am going to kind of round it it's easier to figure out the dimensions that you want to cut the mat if you round it to the nearest quarter as opposed to dealing with eighths that can get a little confusing so I'm going to call this um, seven and three quarters wide by nine and a half high and I'm, so I'm going just a little shy. And then when you're cutting the mat, there are, there are a few different ways that you can do it. First of all, you can have the picture totally centered in the exact center of the mat so that the top and bottom measurements are the same and the side measurements are the same. Another way that you can do it is to weight the bottom and that means that the picture is going to be a little bit higher in the frame. So the top measurement is going to be smaller than the bottom measurement. For one like this, I think that might look a little strange. If this was a smaller picture, I would go for that for the weighted bottom. But I'm going to go ahead and make this right in the center. I'm also noticing as I hold it up that I have a lot more space up at the top and bottom than I do on the sides. And that might look a little bit odd. I think it looks better to have a bit more uniformity. So I'm going to cheat the sides in just a little bit more, which in this picture, since the subject is right in the center, is not really a problem. So I'm going to add in a little bit more on the side. So I'm probably going to just have it be nine and a half high by seven wide. And if you're doing that, definitely take a ruler and make sure that seven inches is enough to capture the full um you know the full picture so you're not cutting somebody's head off or some of their body off or something like that but it's going to work fine for this so now that i have my dimensions i'm going to put it into the mat calculator so i'm going to calculate the mat borders because i want to know how wide each of the borders is going to be and i'm starting with the image size so the width is seven inches and it's nine and a half inches high. So I'm gonna do 9.5. And I want to have a quarter inch overlap. And that means the amount that the mat is going to overlap these measurements. The reason why you wanna do that is if you cut a mat exactly to the picture dimensions, uh, you, first of all, you're gonna see the, the raw edges of the pictures if there are any, but also the picture's not really gonna be held in by the mat. It might fall out through the mat into the glass, which you don't want to have happen. So I'm allowing for a 0.25 or quarter inch overlap. 
and I go to next. Now I'm setting the frame size and the frame size is not the outside edge to the outside edge, it's the inside edge to the inside edge. So it's what I measured already for the mat. And I think that was 10 and a half by 14. But I'm just gonna double check, because again, like nothing stinks more than cutting the whole mat and then you realize it doesn't fit. So 10 and a half. by 14. Okay, and now it's asking me if I want to weight the bottom, and I'm gonna put in a zero. I don't want to weight the bottom on this one. And then when I calculate, it tells me the top and the bottom are gonna be two and a half inches, and the sides are gonna be two inches each. So it's really easy to work with. Okay, and I find the two inch line. This is the reason why I like the quilting ruler, because I have a nice, marking that lines up all along the edge. And again, I wanna make sure I'm working on the back. Don't draw on the front of the mat. So I'm gonna draw two inches on either side. And then two and a half inches along the bottom. And I'm drawing the line all the way across, and I'll show you why, but it gives me something to line the bevel cutter up with. So once you've measured it all out, this is what it should look like. You should have four lines that intersect at the corners so you're able to see it, um, all the line all the way through. Okay, so I'm now ready to cut the window for the mat. So I've got, this is a sliding straight edge that helps me make sure that I'm cutting at the right measurement. This is a straight edge that holds the mat. And then this is the bevel cutter and it actually sits on a channel along the straight edge. Again, helping me keep all of my cuts and the mat nice and straight. That's why a mat cutter is so valuable. And the piece I sent flying earlier, this is a little stop. And this is so that the blade doesn't go further than I want it to. And it slides into the channel as well. So I'm going to put my mat in. Again, it's upside down. You always want to be cutting the bevel towards the outside of the mat. So the bulk of the mat should always be towards you, whereas the outside edge should be away from you of the side that you're cutting. I hope that makes sense, but you'll see as I as I work, how I always keep it situated that way. On this side, there is a ruler, and that ruler will help you to set this sliding straight edge to the right measurement. So I'm cutting the sides first, so those need to be two inches, right? And I can refer to my, my mat cutter, yes. Yeah. So the sides are two inches. I'm gonna tighten it into place so it doesn't slide. And then also you can make sure that it lines up with your pencil edge. And then this, the stop, I'm going to set at two and a half inches so that the beveled edge stops at two and a half inches. And I'm putting my beveled edge there. When you work with the bevel cutter, there is a line that shows you where the cutter is going to start cutting. And you want to line up that line with the line that is that you drew earlier to show you the measurements of the window. And then also, I would check very quickly to make sure that the stop is set at the right place. And actually, mine wasn't. I had it set at one and a half instead of two and a half. And make sure that the stop is stopping at the right place. Okay, so everything is set. The mat is in there nice and tight, nice and square. The line is, is um, matched up. And so I push in the bevel cutting blade and slide it along. And it does have a little bit of resistance. I probably need a new blade. 
And since the other side is exactly the same, I don't have to change anything for that. I'm just gonna turn it around, make another cut. Okay, and now I do have to change my measurements because I'm cutting the top and the bottom. So I'm gonna move it to two and a half inches, the side slide, and I'm moving the stop to two inches. And I'm matching up my lines again. Everything looks good. And you can start to see the mat coming out here. I have one more side to do and then it should fall out. Should, it doesn't always. <laughs> but if I've done everything right, it should. So there we go, an old frame, an old picture, a new mat, and you can make a gallery wall of family pictures of your own.